Hey, how's it going? Brian here, and I want to talk about my pen collection. Uh, this is some of my pens in this Lamy, I think it's Lamy, I forgot the name of this box. Well, it's a wooden box of some sort. So anyway, here we go. And I want to go, le uh, I guess, my left here, right? I forgot the orientation. So I guess I'll go from here to here. So uh, I've been collecting fountain pens for quite some time. And the most important thing I look for in a fountain pen is two things. One, is it unique? I don't really care about the body unless it's orange because orange is my favorite color. Um, I basically go for the nib. So let's start here. So this right here is a Pilot. Which one is this? 742 uh, fountain pen. So basically it's uh, made from Pilot, made in Japan. And when I put fountain pens, I, I, I don't like to put the cap on because the resin or plastic or cellulite, whatever you want to call it, is going to leave like a scratchy ring here. So I, I like to put the cap on the side. And basically, this is the pen. So this is a fine falcon, very wet. It's like a wet noodle flex nib. So basically, like when you apply a little pressure, it, it flexes. And I really like that. So you really get that uh, definitive um, stretch. And basically you open it up and you put it in and it's a uh, piston converter. Let me see, I think it's, so yeah, you just push it and then I think I gotta clean this up actually because the ink is dried out. I haven't used it in a long time. Basically you put it in the ink well, push, 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 and then the ink uh, uh, rushes up and then you use it. I'm gonna put this aside to rinse out the barrel, but this is one of my favorite fountain pens to Right with simple, and I really go for the nib. The nib is, I believe, is 18 karat uh, uh, solid gold. Go from there. So put this away. Uh, personal favorite. I think this retailed when I bought it. I don't know, like 20. Uh, I forgot how how many years. I think the retail was like 187 or something. Can't really find it. Uh, shipped from Japan and what have you. So the second one is. Another custom pilot, I think it's 74. So what is this? Oh, so this is a uh, music nib or italics nib. So again, also made from pilot because I'm a fan of the nib more more than I am a fan of the body. I like simple. I think it's what's in the inside that counts, um, even though it is quite beautiful, simple. And it has two slits. So it writes very, very wet, flows very well. And it writes italic, so they call it music nib. In um, I think they market it as a music nib, but it's really a, a, like uh, italics. And basically, a piston twist, go up, go down, and you can flush it out with a uh, ink. This is also highly recommended. Writes very well. Um, they call it music nib, I think, because, you know, music notes, I think, you know, having that flat head. This is a Mont Blanc. Uh, I think it's a 146 Classique uh, Platinum, everything. So these, they have a lot of, they make a lot of these fakes, and this is authentic. If, if you want it to be authentic, it's going to say, like, under here, it's going to say Pix on it, in, on the underside of the clip. And I think this is Meisterstruck. The engraving and stuff is like a little different. Let's open this up here. Um, I don't know if there's like a serial number on it or not, but don't really remember, but I, I do love it. Although I don't use it often. Uh, so this is again, 14 karat, I think, uh, two tone. So you have like the, uh, plating, I forgot what plating is, uh, white gold rhodium. I, I don't remember. And then the white, white gold after. So this I believe is a fine nib. So the thing about the German fine nib is it writes like a Japanese me medium or broad because um, like the style is different. Like when when you say Japanese fine nib, you mean like very fine, like point, think about like a 0.38 pilot pen or something very fine. And and uh, this is a Mont Blanc. It's like a twist in uh, cup, put it up. The thing I like about the Mont Blanc, unlike the other pens, and I'll, I'll show you is that this converter, it's screw in. The other ones, I don't like to take in and out. But this is screw in there. You, as you can see, the threads, you put it in and then you can screw it in. And I feel like it's a lot more stable. It's not going to just uh, fall out like the other um, 
other ones, I feel like if you take it out and in too often, uh, you might have to buy the uh, converter again because it'll, it'll loosen up. So another one that I, I like to have, just to say I have a Mont Blanc in my collection, uh, this is a Namiki Falcon. I think it's also made by Pilot, but I think it's under the brand name Namiki. So this is another uh, wet writing fountain pen. What I mean by that is like based on the design, it flexes when you write. So there's like a little bit of, you can apply some pressure and then the the two hinges will split out a little bit, but you, you don't want to do this with too many fountain pens, if, especially if they're not designed to work because once it once you break it, like you, you flex it too much and it breaks, like that that's game over. You can't just like fold it back. So you really want to be gentle and you never want to write against the paper, especially flexing because you'll dig into the paper and you might bend the nib and once you bend the nib you're you're screwed and you know it won't write the same or you have to get it repaired and it's just a hassle so you really want to be delicate with it and only write against the paper so when to write against the paper and especially if you're flexing it out with a little bit of pressure uh so you get that variation of small to large to small to large and this also is let me try to turn this also like a piston converter uh in and out simple i think this was was 180 bucks something like that 150 160 all the these nibs like uh solid gold solid gold solid gold this one's also solid gold the tips typically are are plated with iridium or some very hard metal so a lot of people say things like um the fountain pen gold conforms to your handwriting uh this is true and not true first of all you you don't actually write on a and I'll show you in this one because it's more prominent. You don't write on the um, the the gold doesn't actually make contact with the paper. What makes contact with the paper is the uh, iridium metal. It's small, very hard metal nib. And yes, if you w use it very often, you'll wear off the top of it because it makes contact with the paper, causes friction, and in a few years it might smoothen out or write differently based on your handwriting. But it's not the gold that conforms to your writing. It's a it's really a selling point rather than physical fact. This I really like. So this is like probably like 200, 200, 460, 500 Mont Blanc, like 180, something like that. This one I really love as the everyday use. I think this is like $36. Um, open it up, simple. This is a metal uh, stainless steel, I believe, uh, fine point pen. I love this one because it's so expressive. You can open it. And you can see when it's full or not. I love the fact that it's clear. I love the fact that, you know, you open it up, close it, and then basically you know what you're getting. Like when you have to refill it or whatever. This is a simple everyday uh, carry. Come in, come out, put it in, put it out. Um, Pilot Para. And I really like it. It's just simple and works very well. This is my personal favorite like $36. My personal favorite, which is a Sailor Regulus. I love the orange color. I think it was like 80 bucks when I bought it, $79, something like that. A uh, Sailor, um, another Japanese company, open it up, Regulus. I don't know if it has an Arabian nib or not. I think it's a stainless steel, fine point, but I love it because I think it's like plated with rhodium or something on the nib. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I Don't quote me on that. Open it up and I love, I just love it. You know, piston converter, put it in the the ink, and then basically draw it up like a hypodermic needle or syringe or whatever. Just great. Uh, like simple. Um, I use this a lot in uh, college. I think this was like my everyday use and always afraid to lose it because I wouldn't know how to get another one in. I just love orange. Um, this one is not a fountain pen. Uh, this is a brush pen, I think. Let's turn it around. I think turn around or open don't remember turn around yeah twist i don't think any of them are just pop open i think you have to unscrew it uh no this is a i think it's a brush pen let me see it also has the piston converter so this is a i think it's a brush pen oh yes it is it's not a fountain pen but it's a brush i just really like it as part of my collection i forgot the company that it's made from but it's like maki so it's like painted this is actually like a metal painting or dust of some sort I think they call it Maki, which is like gold powder. And then someone like paints the design on it. It's absolutely, or a machine, I think, because it wasn't expensive. I don't, I don't know. 
machine or painted, but it's really lovely and it's raised and you can feel the textures and everything. And this is a brush, like, I guess, like, if you wanted to do calligraphy or something, you would use this, put in the ink, and then love the... I really forgot the name. It's a pity I don't remember the name of the brand. Of the, or I think it's Platinum, I think. Um, don't remember. But anyway, also has, like, a syringe thing lifted in and then... Oh yeah, so it's like a converter. I forgot how to, and then push it in. I think it's, I don't think it's a screw down. I think it's just, yeah, it doesn't feel like a screw down. It's just like push in. And I don't like to use it like in and out too often because I feel like the more you use the converter, you're gonna loosen the um, the grip. And so I use it, I, I, I feel like I don't use this more. It's more like a collection piece than something I'll, I'll, I'll use. Because I look, I, it just looks really nice. Um, so yeah, you, you'll feel a lot of pens with, with like fancy different bodies, fancy different designs, and at that point you treat it really like a uh, jewelry. With me, the body does matter, but what really matters the most is the writing experience, uh, the comfort, the feel of it, and the nib. Uh, this is my, if you, if I had a favorite fountain pen, this is one of them. It's a Dax Simpsons. It's made by Sailor. That's actually how I found out about Sailor. So Dax Simpson, I think, is like a London um, fashion company, and Sailor made this for them. So this is an 18-carat extra fine nib, smallest fountain pen ever. My personal favorite. So glad I never lost this. And orange uh, caramel color. And I use this so often that that um, the rhythm nib is so small, right? Super, super fine. Um, starts to conform to my handwriting. And this one has the converter. It's this very small piston converter. I don't want to mess with that. So I'm just gonna pull it here so I show you like how it works, like up, and I'm gonna hold it from here and down. So it's like very, even though it's very small converter, simple converter, because it writes such a fine, small lines that you can actually use it for uh, quite some time. And then twisting in and then be very delicate with it. I absolutely, Love this pen and I love it so much that I, I don't I feel like I never want to use it because I want to keep it like a almost like a museum piece. So this is a Waterman vintage fountain pen. I think it's from the 1920s, um, if I'm not mistaken. So it's made with like a black resin thing here, has a pusher pin thing. I'm gonna open twist it to open up. Really nice. And I guess you can see the difference between like the wear and how it must have been originally. So this is like the wear and whatever. And I imagine that this glossy, beautiful feel is what it used to feel like before, you know, you have like what it must have looked like new versus now. And I love it because this is a super flex, like very wet flex. You can go out and then flex it. I don't think the nib has any iridium on it, or maybe it does, I can't tell, but Waterman original, uh, I think it's like 14 karat rolled gold and it has a piston. So you put it in and then you open this piston. So, you, well, I think you open the piston first and it pushes out the, there's a sack in here, like a, like a rubber sack, push it out and then put it in and then push it back in like this. And then I think the sack decompresses soaking up the, um, ink in, it's like a real marvel of physics and i really appreciate um it from like a physics standpoint and it's definitely a very unique way to refill because there's no cartridge or converter and it's a lever it's all mechanical absolutely beautiful vintage piece and i definitely want to keep it as long as i can screw it back um this one is another one it's very very tiny and i like it because it's like a pocket pen it's got an engrave like i think it says M Norton on it, also piston, very tiny, it works. Unscrew it, I think it's gold plated for sure, I don't think it's solid gold, definitely like, I think like looking on the inside, I see like it's a plating, but it's really nice. And then it has like a small little piston thing, I feel like I have to be very delicate with it. So a small piston, push it out, and then um, push it back in. I think it's like the rubber sacker in there is so old. I don't want to really um, push it too much and 
and uh, let it crack or whatever, but definitely like out and then in and, you know, I would use it, probably just dip it in and not really worry about filling it because it's so old. It's probably like also from the 1920s or something, 1930s. I kind of, and this is like in terms of the thing. And this one is the most flexible of any of the pens that I own, I think, besides the Pilot ones, because you can really see that flex, that real flex between the two um, lines when you use it, rolled gold, and absolute beautiful piece. But I heard a, like a little squeegee sound. I'm not sure it's probably because like the rubber's so old and, you know, I used, I, I flushed it out before the ink and I cleaned it up before I put it into storage and I bought this I think like 10 years ago and I think it's time to get might be time to fix it although I'm sure it works because I take care of my pen very well anyway that concludes my first uh found pen video let me know which one you like leave a comment on the section below and uh, hope to do more videos for you guys again uh completely unscripted have a wonderful day